Thank you very much. Our next guest might have a thing to say about the England team wearing their poppies, yes, I imagine. At the age of 92, Victor Gregg is a World War II veteran with an incredible story to tell. He fought in some of the most ferocious battles, including El Alamein and Market Garden. He escaped from a prison camp twice and then incredibly witnessed the true horror of the Dresden bombings from the ground. As part of this year's Remembrance Weekend, BBC Radio 2 are airing a special documentary about his experiences. And he joins us now. Victor Gregg, very good morning to you. And uh, it's extraordinary, actually, that you're here. Because having read some of your experiences, there were quite a few moments when you might not have expected to be here. You've read them, have you? Yes. Well, it's a matter of luck, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Luck. Shall we, shall we go to one incident in particular? Because it's a good example. You're parachuted into Arnhem. You're told it's going to be a piece of cake. You arrive and you're in the middle of a firefight up against panzer units. And you realise this is not, as you say, the cake walk you've been promised. Somebody has blundered. How did you get out of there? Well, uh, the group that I joined the paratroops with, uh, they were the, I was in the 10th Battalion, and uh, the 10th Battalion was mainly uh, a battalion which had been raised in Britain, in England, and uh, there was about 40 of us who uh, volunteered from the 7th Armoured Div, because they asked for volunteers, and uh, I'm not going to go into that now. But uh, when they talk about cakewalks and things, that, that didn't... That didn't bear with us. We knew jolly well what it was going to be like. Although, I mean, uh, we felt rather sorry for the lads who had never fired a shot in anger and being thrown into that sort of maelstrom. Because we was literally jumping on the dead bodies of the lads who had jumped the day before. So how did you get out of it? Well, not a lot, not a lot of the lads did. Uh, the battalion I was in, the 10th battalion, on the, on the second day after they jumped, out of the four or five hundred who jumped out of that battalion, I think there was 80 left standing. So, uh, it's, it's, it, you're lucky, you're lucky, you get away with it. And Victor, uh, take us through events in, in Dresden. T t tell us why you were there at that time. Well, it's interesting because I burnt the factory down. Uh, I volunteered for a work camp when I was captured at Arnhem. So you were a prisoner of war at that point? Yeah, I was a prisoner of war. And uh, I volunteered for this work camp because I couldn't see any way of getting out of 4B because it's such a big camp. I didn't volunteer on my own. There was another half a dozen of us went down there. And they give you all sorts of jobs, cleaning the streets and stuff like that. But mind you, it's two foot of snow because it's winter. And uh, for punishment for trying to get away, they sent me to this soap factory, which uh, I put a load of cement in the machine instead of soap powder. And, uh, and that when they went the next day to put the machine on, all the electric wiring caught a light. So you sabotaged the I sabotaged Well, the I, I didn't think it was only a joke when I'd done it. I thought, you know, we'll have a joke, you know, cause a bit of a disturbance. But it was seen and, as sabotage. Uh, anyway. The factory burnt down, so uh, we got shoved in this straff lager where we were going to get shot for sabotage. So you were due to be executed? Well, in due course. Uh, two Americans who were in there for looting in this sort of camp, it wasn't a camp, it was a, like a big building right in the centre of Dresden. And they told us that uh, they took 30 out every morning and shot them. The Germans were very methodical people, they took 30 out and that was it. Mm. So we thought, well, there's about 300 in here. We got, you know, the war might be over by that time. And my mate, Harry, he was still laughing and joking. Uh, that night, they come over and bombed it. Mm. Killed Harry. He got killed by blast. There was not a mark on him. But everything inside him had been pushed, pushed out of him through all the orifices. Uh, and. Uh, and this, this is one of the, the moments in the war which you, I think it would be true to say, have found the hardest to deal with. Because yeah. even though that, 
that bombing released you from prison so that you, you know, then you, you no longer faced this prospect of being executed in the morning. The bombing of Dresden has left a really indelible mark upon you, hasn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I'd, I'd seen some of my best mates killed. Mm. I mean, uh, Frankie Bat was killed at Alamein. Uh, Ted Cunningham was killed later on after Alamein. All very, very close friends of mine. Uh, and uh, you see men killed, uh, and you kill men. There's no, I can't get away from that because I, I was in the front line unit. You kill them. Uh, you're turned into a psychopath. But I'd never seen women and women and children in the middle of all that. Uh, this was completely new to me, and uh, I just thought it was evil. And anyway, I mean, so it was the uh, probably the it was that which really. Uh, uh, sort of bent my mind completely uh, when you see women and children burn in a light being pulled up into the sky and you can't do nothing about it and you can't uh, when is you see all these child bodies laying mm. on the ground uh, it's terrible it's, it's ter I, I, I see no glory no glory whatsoever in war well, Victor, can I just give you a last thought? Mike was just mentioning about the poppies and common sense, if you like, uh, coming to the fore in relation to the England team and the poppies. Did you have a thought on that? No, I think it's all, uh, uh, I, I know a bloke who uh, he, he, he put a ten, he put a five pound note in in a tin, and he won't wear a poppy. He says, no, he says, uh, I, I'll carry my grief or whatever it is with me. Yeah. I don't want to advertise it. Why should I? So there's a lot of people who don't wear poppies, who uh, who, who still uh, grieve or or, or pay uh, respect to those lads who uh, who they're trying to remember. But as as far as I can see it, in the case of the England team, they was told that I should think that they that was the name of the game. Okay, we're all going to wear poppies. Who says that? The manager. Right. I should I, I should think myself it would have been better. If the lads in and said, oh, we're going to wear a poppy, great. So they wear a poppy. And if somebody don't like it, say, that's your hard luck, mate. I want it, and I'm going to wear it. Victor, a lot of people would agree with you. Uh, so it's such a pleasure to see you here. Thank you very much for mm. coming in for us. Fantastic to see you. Thank you very much. You can listen to Victor's amazing story in full tomorrow evening, BBC Radio 2, at 9 o'clock. And his book, The Rifleman, is also out.